Imagine living on another planet, or even a moon or an asteroid. How would it be like? What would you see, feel, eat, and do? Would you miss Earth, or would you be happy to start a new life elsewhere? Hello and welcome to Curiosity, where we explore fascinating and interesting topics about everything. Today we are going to ask a big question, do we have to leave Earth someday? Those are not just hypothetical questions. They are becoming more and more relevant as our planet faces increasing threats from climate change, overpopulation, resource depletion, and natural disasters. Some scientists and experts believe that we have to find a new home in space before it is too late. But how realistic is this idea? How soon do we have to leave Earth? And where would we go? In this episode, we will explore some of the reasons and challenges of leaving Earth for good, based on recent studies and discoveries. First of all, why do we have to leave Earth? Well, there are several factors that could make our planet uninhabitable in the future. One of them is the Sun. The Sun is our main source of energy and life, but it is also slowly getting hotter and brighter. In about a billion years, the Sun will be 10% brighter than it is today, which will cause the Earth's surface temperature to rise by about 18 degrees Celsius. This will make most of the water on Earth evaporate, creating a runaway greenhouse effect that will make Venus look like a paradise. Another factor is the depletion of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are the main source of energy for most of human civilization, but they are also finite and non-renewable. According to a recent study published in Nature, about 60% of the world's oil and gas reserves and 90% of its coal reserves have to remain in the ground if we want to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by 2050. This means that we have to find alternative sources of energy that are cleaner and more sustainable, or face severe consequences such as food shortages, water scarcity, social unrest, and mass migration. A third factor is the possibility of a large-scale disaster that could wipe out most of life on Earth. This could be caused by natural events such as asteroid impacts, supervolcano eruptions, gamma-ray bursts, or pandemics. Or by human actions such as nuclear war, bioterrorism, artificial intelligence, or nanotechnology. The probability of any of these events happening is low, but not zero. And if they do happen, they could cause irreversible damage to our biosphere and civilization. So how can we avoid these scenarios? One option is to adapt to the changing conditions on Earth by developing new technologies, policies, and behaviors that can reduce our environmental impact and increase our resilience. For example, we could use renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, hydro, and geothermal. We could implement carbon capture and storage systems that can remove excess greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. We could create more efficient and sustainable ways of producing and consuming food, water, and materials. We could enhance our disaster preparedness and response capabilities. We could promote cooperation and peace among nations and cultures. Another option is to leave Earth altogether and colonize other worlds in space. This may sound like science fiction, but it is actually becoming more feasible thanks to advances in space exploration and technology. For example, NASA plans to send humans back to the moon by 2024 and establish a permanent lunar outpost by 2028. SpaceX aims to launch its first crewed mission to Mars by 2026 and build a city there by 2050. And several private companies are developing plans to mine asteroids for valuable resources such as metals, water, and fuel. But leaving Earth is not easy. It involves many challenges and risks that we have to overcome before we can call another place our home. Some of these challenges are as follows. Distance. The nearest planets and moons in our solar system are millions of kilometers away from Earth. This means that traveling there would take months or years with current technology. And once there, we would be isolated from Earth's communication, support, and rescue systems. Environment. 
the environments of other worlds are very different from Earth's. They have different gravity, temperature, atmosphere, weather, and radiation levels. This means that we would need special equipment, vehicles, and habitats to survive there. And we would also have to adapt our bodies, minds, and cultures to these new conditions. Resources. The resources of other worlds are limited and unknown. This means that we would have to bring everything we need with us or find ways to harvest them from the local environment. And we would also have to manage them wisely and sustainably to avoid repeating the mistakes we made on Earth. Life. The existence of life on other worlds is uncertain and controversial. This means that we would have to search for it carefully and respectfully to avoid harming it or being harmed by it. And we would also have to deal with the ethical and social implications of finding or creating life elsewhere. These are some of the reasons and challenges of leaving Earth for good. It is not an easy decision or a simple task. It requires vision, courage, creativity, and cooperation. But it may also be necessary or inevitable for our survival and evolution. To illustrate these points, let's look at some examples of how humans have tried or planned to leave Earth for good. The first example is the International Space Station. The ISS is a large orbiting laboratory that has been continuously inhabited by humans since 2000. It is a joint project of 15 countries, including the United States, Russia, Canada, Japan, and several European nations. The ISS serves as a platform for scientific research, technological development, and international cooperation in space. It also provides valuable insights into how humans can live and work in microgravity for long periods of time. The second example is the Moon. The Moon is the only celestial body other than Earth that humans have visited so far. Between 1969 and 1972, 12 astronauts from NASA's Apollo program landed on the lunar surface and conducted various experiments and explorations. The last human mission to the Moon was Apollo 17 in December 1972. Since then, no one has returned to the Moon, although several robotic probes have orbited or landed there. However, there are plans to revive human lunar exploration in the near future. NASA's Artemis program aims to land the first woman and the next man on the Moon by 2024, and establish a sustainable presence there by 2028. Other countries such as China, India, Russia, and Japan also have ambitions to send humans or robots to the Moon. The third example is Mars. Mars is often considered the most promising destination for human colonization in space. It has many similarities with Earth, such as a day-night cycle, seasons, polar caps, volcanoes, canyons, and frozen rivers. It also has some advantages over Earth, such as having only 38% of Earth's gravity, receiving 43% of Earth's solar energy, and containing potential resources such as water ice that makes up to 35% of its mass, carbon dioxide that fills 95% of its atmosphere, and iron oxide that gives it its red color. However, Mars also has many challenges for human settlement, such as being extremely cold with an average temperature of minus 63 degrees Celsius, having a thin atmosphere with only 0.6% of Earth's pressure, facing high radiation that is up to 15 times higher than on Earth, enduring dust storms that cover the entire planet every few years, and being isolated from Earth by at least six months of travel time. Despite these difficulties, many people are fascinated by the idea of living on Mars. SpaceX founder Elon Musk has stated his goal of making humans a multi-planetary species by colonizing Mars with millions of people in the next century. NASA has also announced its vision of sending humans to Mars in the 2030s as part of its Journey to Mars program. The fourth example is asteroids. Asteroids are small rocky bodies that orbit the Sun, mostly between Mars and Jupiter in the asteroid belt. 
There are millions of asteroids in our solar system, ranging in size from a few meters to hundreds of kilometers across. Some asteroids cross or approach Earth's orbit from time to time, posing a potential threat of impact. However, asteroids also offer opportunities for exploration and exploitation in space. Asteroids contain various minerals and metals that could be useful for building structures or spacecraft in space. They also contain water ice that could be used for drinking or making rocket fuel by splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen. Some asteroids are easier to reach than the Moon or Mars in terms of energy required for launch and landing. Several private companies such as Planetary Resources and Deep Space Industries have proposed missions to mine asteroids for profit in the future. The fifth example is exoplanets. Exoplanets are planets that orbit stars other than our Sun. There are thousands of exoplanets known so far, with many more waiting to be discovered by future telescopes. Some exoplanets are similar to Earth in size, temperature, and composition. They could potentially harbor life or be suitable for human colonization. However, exoplanets are also very far away from Earth. The nearest one, Proxima Centauri b, is about 4.2 light years away. This means that traveling there with current technology would take tens of thousands of years, even if we could develop faster spacecraft or warp drives in the future, we would still face many challenges and uncertainties in reaching and living on exoplanets. These are some examples of how humans have tried or planned to leave Earth for good. They show us the possibilities and difficulties of space colonization. They also raise many questions and dilemmas about our future in space as follows. What are the benefits and costs of leaving Earth for good? Who should decide who goes and who stays on Earth? How would we govern and protect ourselves in space? How would we interact and cooperate with other spacefaring civilizations? How would we preserve and respect the diversity of life in space? How would we maintain our connection and identity with Earth? These are not easy questions to answer. They require careful thought and discussion among scientists, engineers, politicians, philosophers, artists, and citizens. They also require curiosity and imagination to envision new possibilities and solutions. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for watching Curiosity. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content like this. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious, 